keep them private or confidential. On the other hand, we feel like, from our past experience over 10 years, that the public discussion of the surgery and its outcomes with uh, patients who've had the surgery is really valuable. <clears throat> There's really a long history in medicine of us actually sharing our experiences with others. And so, for example, prenatal care, because it's a kind of a celebration of the uh, birth of a child, is done in a group. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous, we spoke about alcohol for a second uh, a minute ago, and uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, of course, is where people in a group stand up and say, I'm an alcoholic, and that's obviously a, a very touchy subject for, for most people. Um, Another example is study in breast cancer patients, where they looked at breast cancer patients who participated in a support group. And the women that participated and talked about and discussed coping with their breast cancer had better survival. So there is a precedent for uh, talking in a public group, but we may not do it without your permission. And as you can see today, we've got all the cameras going and things like that, so we have to ask your legal permission before we start with the understanding that you might have a good reason to keep something private or confidential. If you do have something that you want to keep private or confidential, please do. And we won't discuss it here in the public clinic, but after we're finished, we'll turn off all the, the uh, high-tech equipment here, <coughs> my $50 video camera, uh, and we'll go ahead and talk privately, if you wish. But before we start, may I ask one, then, uh, can I have your legal permission to talk to you all in a public group this morning? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. The way the clinic goes this morning is first, we're going to talk to the patients who had surgery last week, and they may or may not give us permission to take their staples out and kind of see what the wounds are like and things like that, and they'll talk about their experiences. Um, then we'll talk with the people who are planning on having surgery this week, and then we'll talk with uh, kind of any other stragglers who happen to be here by mistake. They just kind of got lost and came in just to kind of see what was going on. Um, but that's our plan for this morning. So first, um, looks like Carol, you might be first. Do you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Carolyn. What's the scoop? How are you? I'm terrific. Um, I haven't, I'm almost afraid to say I haven't had a bad moment. You know, right, knock on wood. Right. Yes. Um, I've lost 12 pounds. Very good. And uh, I'm off of almost all of my medications. I was taking high blood pressure medication. <coughs> Uh, cholesterol medication and uh, heart medication, which has since been cut down in half. And uh, the only thing that I'm still taking full dose is um, the Plavix, the, the blood thinner. Right, that's and for you. Effexor because, you know. We don't think that we necessarily fixed the Effexor problem right. with the surgery. Although, as we talked about last week, six months or a year from now, it's appropriate to go back and meet with your doctor and discuss that issue. Right. Um, I got the patch on, uh, the, the, the uh, estrogen patch on Saturday night, just on general principles, because I could feel myself getting edgy, and uh, you know, she just noticed my husband's just a little guy, I didn't want to hurt him. <laughs> 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 so we put the patch on on, on Saturday morning, on Sunday morning rather. Um, I went back to work yesterday, I worked for about five hours. The only issue that I have is that I'm tired. At the at, at the middle of the day, I've had it. I so you're right now. You're six days post-op. Mm -hmm. You've already been back to work one day, mm -hmm. and your issue is you're still a little tired. Yes, I see. I understand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> okay, you're five, six days post-op, and right. yeah, it might take a few day, a few more days to be back to your old self again. But already being back to work that quickly is good. Uh, I like to talk about Trish having surgery on Friday, and I gave her the entire weekend off, and then she came back to work on Monday, and she did get a little tired towards the end of the day, so I let her go home early. What a guy. That was nice. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> so, uh, but it's not, so, I mean, we also had a similar situation, a patient, we were having clinic, and a woman came in who'd had surgery last week, and I said, hi, how are you doing? And uh, she said, oh, terrible. I said, note to self. These public clinics, bad idea. Um, I said, oh no, what's wrong? She said, well, you know I'm a caterer. I said, yes. She said, well, on Thursday, uh, I had to cater a wedding of 300 people. And by 9 o'clock that night, I was just beat. I said, Thursday, your surgery was Tuesday. I said, well, 
yeah, you know, it can take several days to get better from major surgery. She says, well, I guess you're right. So, uh, yeah, so it's not too surprising to be a little bit tired. Um, you said you'd lost 12 pounds? 12 pounds. In six days. In six days. Okay, that's two pounds a day. That that's might be a touch too yeah. fast. So one of the things we like to emphasize to our pre-op patients is to remember that the surgery itself is very powerful. It's going to cause a massive change in your hormones. And these hormones are going to cause a massive sodium diuresis. And that's big medical words for <clears throat> peeing your brains out. Sorry, you like, sodium diuresis sounds better, doesn't it? It's a lot of salt water is going to be lost because of the change in hormones. And that massive diuresis can be so powerful that it can leave you somewhat dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So 12 pounds in six days is a lot. It may be that part of your fatigue is just not keeping up on the salt quite enough. Right. I the other thing is that you're on your beta blocker, the sodalol. Right. So can we talk about that a little bit? Certainly. You have cut it in half. I have. You're worried about going down too quickly on the possibility you could get a recurrence of your atrial fibrillation. Right. And I am thinking of going back to a whole pill in the morning and a half a pill at night just simply because I have found over the last 36 hours that uh, I, I can have a heart rate as high as 90 again, mm -hmm. and that, that scares me. Okay. Well, I was going to go the other direction with you and say that uh, it could be that your beta blocker is giving you some of the fatigue, mm -hmm. and with 12 pounds of weight loss, um, it might be that kind of decreasing your morning dose might allow you to get through the day a little bit better. Oh, okay. But uh, let me ask you, you said you had one time or more than once when your pulse was 90? Yes. And do you remember when exactly that was? During the day when I was moving around and stuff. Right. You know, of course, that's what we expect. You know, the body, when you are active, it's supposed to turn on the pulse rate. Mm -hmm. So when you go upstairs, when you get angry, right. when you stub your toe, um, those activities are supposed to turn on your pulse rate. Mm -hmm. We expect a normal pulse rate to go up, even to 120s and 140s sometimes. And that's normal if you're kind of climbing stairs or doing something like that. If you're jogging, if you're playing basketball, you know, if your team is losing in the Super Bowl, you know, those kind of things can all raise the heart rate. So it may be that you can stay on the sodalol half dose. Okay. One thing is you said you could increase it, especially increasing it during the day, that'll slow your heart rate. But it's well known that beta blockers can cause fatigue. Okay. So another option is to actually trim some of that morning dose and then watch your pulse rate. If you notice that it's fast or you feel your heart racing or something like that, you have two options then. One is you could take the soda law. The other thing is you might take a little extra salt water okay. in the form of uh, things and measure your blood pressure. And that let, brings us to your blood pressure. Do you remember what your blood pressure has been recently? Oh, it's been an average of 110 over 80. It doesn't want it, you know, maybe once a day it'll go up to 130 over you know, 85. That's pretty spectacular. You know, in other words, that's a really good blood pressure. And so for people with heart disease, what we're looking for is a low pressure head to work against. Mm -hmm. So with your kind of, I don't want to say bad heart, but your, your heart with some heart disease, right. by turning down the pressure, we let it pump better. Okay. Now, if on top of that we give extra soda wall, we sometimes can get some fatigue and things mm -hmm. like that. So I would continue to monitor your blood pressure and stay in touch with me. If you wanted to experiment by taking more soda oil, you could. I feel that's probably going to cause more tiredness and fatigue. Or I could go back to, now Dr. Shaw told me that I can always take, it was, you can always take an extra soda oil. Yes. So if my heart rate does start to If you're concerned, you can always take I an extra. I just take another half then yeah. and, and not My suspicion that. is, like, if you find a pulse rate of 90, if you look around, you're going to see that you're excited, you've been active, or something like that. And if you sit down and rest for five minutes, mm -hmm. and maybe have a little bit of Gatorade mm -hmm. or saltine crackers or something like mm -hmm. that, you might find that your pulse goes right back down, and you can measure your blood pressure. And you might find what we hope and pray and expect, which is we hope to get you over that heart disease. We hope to improve that and get you off those medicines. That would be like. I told you last week I'll build your shrine. Yeah, well, just, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, so. I did have one issue, though, that I've never heard talked about here, never heard spoken about, and it's just, it's an emotional issue. Right. Um, I really was excited about doing this, and I couldn't wait to do this, and I had a 
date a few months back and stuff happened and I couldn't do it. And I finally got to do it last Wednesday and I was more excited than I could believe. And Sunday morning I woke up and said, what the hell did I do? Wait a second here. Oh, you mean about the surgery? Yeah. Yeah, what that, what, that what feeling that? of, yeah, we get people like that. We get these phone calls from people who are two or three or four days post-op and they say, oh my goodness. Yeah. I have mutilated my body, oh. and you know I feel like God. I, you know I've, you know, really done something against I God's will. With the patch, but. Well, we have found in many cases, and and it's oftentimes, sometimes in people who are doing well. Although it makes more sense if you're not doing well, but we've seen it in people just doing terrific. And what we've tried is, like you say, is the estrogen patch. Yeah, I call it buyer's remorse. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like looking at that, looking at that Lexus out in the driveway, thinking, what the hell? I well, on the other hand, we don't get it in everybody, and the estrogen patch really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Again, just for those of you who are kind of new here, we'll go over this again. An obese person, an obese woman, has extremely high estrogen, abnormally high estrogen. That high estrogen is associated with increased risk of breast cancer throughout your lifetime. It's associated with an increased risk of uh, endometrial cancer. It's an increased. It's associated with an increased risk of blood clots, and all these things together are profoundly dangerous. The wonderful thing about our surgery is almost immediately afterwards the estrogen drops. Mm -hmm. So that is good news as far as long-term risk of breast cancer and endometrial cancer and blood clots. On the other hand, suddenly dropping the estrogen can cause very powerful symptoms like nausea and vomiting, like uh, anger irritability, lack of coping skills, crying, things like that. And so we find about a quarter of our patients will have this kind of, the wheels come off, I can't deal, I'm upset, I'm tearful, I'm, I just, what am I doing, what have I done? And that feeling is often resolved by an estrogen patch. Now, some people hear that story about the estrogen patch and they say, well, I tried one estrogen patch and it didn't work. So I want to follow that up by telling another story, and that is of an orthopedic surgeon that we operated on from Colorado. She uh, was calling me about a week post-op, and she was, uh, this was wrong and that was wrong. She didn't like Las Vegas, it was too hot. She didn't like the cabbie, she didn't like the hotel. Sandy hadn't answered her phone one time. The hospital staff was rude to her. You know, just everything you could think of was bothering her. I didn't really find any big medical problems, so I brought up the possibility, I thought in a very gentle way, uh, the possibility she might want to consider trying the estrogen patch. And she, I thought flames were going to come through the phone. Oh, Dr. Rutledge, you know, here I thought you were a, a reasonable doctor. I find out you're just a male chauvinist. I come to you with important problems. You put it off on my gender. Oh, da, 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 da. And the horse you rode in on, it was just, you know, it was awful. <laughs> So after a few minutes, I said, well, let me ask you this. What does the family say about you since you've gotten home? And there was a long pause. And almost with almost a tearful voice came back saying, you know, my children say I've gotten really mean. So she went to her doctor and actually got her blood levels measured. And they kept putting estrogen patches on until she got back up to where she was. So for a while, she was wearing eight estrogen patches. <laughs> now, preoperatively, preoperatively, she was just the nicest orthopedic surgeon in that clinic in Colorado. And afterwards, she deteriorated quite a bit as far as how much people liked her. And once she got her patches on, her family and her co-workers loved me. <laughs> so, uh, you have tried one estrogen patch. I'm doing good with it. Yeah, I would say I'd try another, though. Yeah. I'm cold. That lack of the, the kind of feeling of cold is one of the hallmarks of the hormonal changes we get from the surgery. And again, we have a story about that as well. We had a woman who was married to a man who worked for NASA and worked at Cape Canaveral in Florida where it's pretty hot and muggy. She, as a heavy woman, could not tolerate the heat in Florida, so she lived in the mountains of North Carolina. And they would get together on kind of regular things, but they found that that worked pretty well for them. And after the surgery, she got quite cold. And that we, we expect that's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was able to move in with her husband at, in, at Cape Canaveral 
and they found that they didn't really like each other that much, and so then they got divorced. But <laughs> so it's not the best story, but uh, yeah. So we do find that you're, we expect for you to get cold. Yeah, because I've never been cold in my life, and so this is a very interesting situation. This is new, well, welcome to our new world. Yes, ma'am. What about um, women that have had hysterectomies and their estrogen levels already down? Yeah, I'll tell you another story. Okay. Uh, I had a very, uh, you know, you all are kind of dressed kind of casual today, which I think is reasonable. We had a woman, though, from California, a professional woman, and when she came, she was fully dressed, you know, heels and a suit and everything. And um, she had her surgery, and about three or four or five days post-op, right before she was going to come to clinic, she called me one night with kind of a litany of complaints this is bad and that's bad and I don't like you and Sandy didn't answer her phone and the cabbies are bad and Las Vegas is too hot. And so, uh, you know, again, I thought very gently, I brought up the possibility she might want to consider the estrogen patch. Well, again, flames. Dr. Rutledge, you know, this is just terrible. You don't know about your patients. Don't you remember? I have already been through menopause. You should know this about your patients. I'm really embarrassed for you. The quality of care you provide is so low. It's just, I'm so upset. You know, I'm just going, well, I apologize. You know, I'm sorry. I said, how can I get an estrogen patch on this lady? Um, so after a listen, I said, let's go over your issues again. I didn't really find anything that I could put my finger on. I said, would you mind, even though it's probably not going to work, would you mind just trying the estrogen patch? Okay. Well, the next morning, we had clinic. She was in clinic completely dressed again, uh, you know, hair, makeup, suit, high heels, stockings, and everything like that, and we turned to ask how she did, and she said, surgery was spectacular. Dr. Rutledge is wonderful, <laughs> and this is great. So we go, okay. She said, but I don't want to have my staples taken out in front of everyone, so I met with her privately, I was taking her staples out, and I said, did you try that estrogen patch? She said, yes, but it didn't work. I said, <coughs> okay. So we have had people who are postmenopausal or after a hysterectomy in which the estrogen patch has been helpful. Now remember, not everyone needs it. We don't see it in all of our patients. It's about one in four of our women who get the low estrogen. And when they have it, the symptoms can be nausea and vomiting, just like you get with pregnancy, the change in estrogen. Uh, you, you can get it with, uh, you get just this feeling of, I, I, can't, I can't cope. Just the wheels have come off, I can't deal, and so everything seems hard and difficult. Uh, and again, that only happens about one in four people. Now the beauty of that problem is it's so easily remedied by just putting on the estrogen patch. That usually fixes it. But again, you have to be aware of this, be willing to use the patch, and also to be able to be willing to try more than one if it's necessary. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a complete hysterectomy uh, 18 years ago. Who thought, you know? <laughs> but it works. Good. Um, you want to have your staples out? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it okay well, to have it in? You're attached to the Monica Cupa. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're attached to the Monica Cupa. Oh, yes, I do. I like her so much.